Her Majesty is back north of the border to mark Holyrood Week, an annual tour which sees the monarch pay tribute to Scottish culture, achievement and community. To begin the visit, she joined her grandson, and second in line to the throne, Prince William at Agbar's factory, where the iconic urn brew drink is manufactured. It is the first time the Queen has visited the nation since her husband Prince Philip passed away at the age of 99 in April. While in the nation, the 95-year-old will also meet with her daughter Princess Anne on Wednesday and Thursday. In a tweet, Buckingham Palace explained Her Majesty is connected to Scotland by ancestry and deeply held affection, adding, the Queen has visited almost every area of Scotland from Outer Hebrides to Dumfries, meeting Scots from all walks of life. Her Majesty met with First Minister Nicola Sturgeon today at a meeting in the Palace of Holyrood House, Edinburgh. The pair reportedly enjoy an animated discussion, with the Queen smiling and waving her arms as she listened to Ms Sturgeon. Despite her clear love of Scotland, politicians in recent months have been highly skeptical of the monarchy, and the question of whether the royal family would remain ingrained in Scottish life should the nation go independent is still unanswered. The Holyrood elections saw Ms Sturgeon's SNP just miss out on securing a majority in Parliament, but they are being held in power by the Scottish Greens, a party which shares the First Minister's wish for Scotland to go independent. Ms Sturgeon argues that with the majority of Scots backing pro-independence parties, it is now time for Scotland to go back to the polls and decide whether they should quit the UK. Were this to become a reality, the Queen's place as monarch in Scotland would again be plunged into doubt. And earlier this year, the Scottish Greens themselves denounced the role of the monarchy in Scotland, claiming the royals would hold the country back if it were to go independent. The remarks were made by Scottish Greens co-leader Patrick Harvey, and came in the aftermath of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's landmark interview with CBS host Oprah Winfrey. The couple, who famously quit the firm last year, made a series of allegations against the royals, including on mental health and race. It led Prince William to publicly defend the monarchy, stressing we're very much not a racist family. Mr Harvey, an MSP for the Glasgow region since 2003, said the revelations made in the interview raise serious questions about the royal family, and serve as a reminder that the monarchy itself is an outdated, discredited and totally undemocratic institution. Speaking in March, he noted, as we look to the future that Scotland can have as a fairer, greener and independent country, it is clear that asking the people to choose a modern, democratically accountable head of state would be the best step forward. Mr Harvey added, the idea that any family has the right to such status based on hereditary titles and unearned wealth would hold Scotland back, and it's not one that the Scottish Greens will ever support. Their shooting and hunting estates can be put to better use serving the local communities and creating more jobs. The Scotland we want to build is one that will challenge entrenched inequality and privilege, not put it right at the heart of power. Prior to the first referendum on independence in 2014, the SNP maintained the Queen would remain as part of Scottish life should the country vote to leave the UK. Then SNP leader Alex Salmond insisted that the Union of the Crowns predated the Union of the Parliaments. Yet, when the yes vote eventually lost by a margin of 10%, tensions turned on the royal family after former Prime Minister David Cameron appeared to admit enlisting the Queen for support in ensuring the union was protected. In the Cameron years, an ITV documentary broadcast in 2019, Mr Cameron argued he had a mounting sense of panic that the vote could go the wrong way. Speaking on the programme, Mr Cameron said that the Queen had not been asked to do anything improper or unconstitutional, but just a raising of the eyebrow, even, you know, a quarter of an inch, we thought would make a difference. The Queen reportedly tentatively told a well-wisher outside Crathy Church near Balmoral ahead of the vote, well, I hope people will think very carefully about the future. Of the Queen's remark at her local church, Mr Cameron said, I think it helped to put a slightly different perception on things. Upon hearing of the intervention, Mr. Salmond, gave a furious verdict on the story in the documentary. 
he said, begging a constitutional monarch to make a political intervention is not only totally improper but an indication of how desperate Prime Minister Cameron was in the final stages of the Scottish referendum campaign. But defending the monarchy, Scottish Conservative MSP, Murdo Fraser, described Mr Harvey's remarks as illogical nonsense in March. He added, the vast majority of Scots will recognise this patronising attempt to woo the electorate and see right through the Greens' illogical nonsense. The benefits of having a constitutional monarchy as opposed to an elected politician as head of state are overwhelming. Patrick Harvey would be best served by actually focusing on environmental matters for once rather than spending his time obsessing about getting rid of the royal family. 